Thanks and good afternoon to everyone. Um, I want to start by thanking Dr. DeVries and Dr. Price, Catherine and Ray, for uh, putting on this incredible meeting. It's, um, it quickly became my favorite meeting last year during its first iteration. So um, as we were talking, I've had many conversations about just how wonderful it is to learn from the entire group that's convened here and how much we all bring to this discussion. So um, this section of the program is uh, looking at the, surg the surgical ecosystem. And this is a term that, or concept that we've been thinking about in describing global surgery as for several years now. So I thought it might be worthwhile to explore, delve deeper into this metaphor a bit and consider some concepts for navigating within the surgical ecosystem and then perhaps look at an example at the end. An ecosystem is defined as a community of living organisms in conjunction with the non-living components of their environment that interact as a system. They're defined by their network, the network of the interactions among and between the organisms in their environment. And one of the key components of an ecosystem is biodiversity, which affects the ecosystem's function and can result in either uh, disturbances in succession. There's a, a large body of knowledge about ecosystem theory, and we're not gonna be going um, very depth, in depth into it, but I thought that there were just a tremendous number of consistencies in the way that um, biological ecosystems are described as, um, as we're describing the work that we do with all of the various uh, inputs and partners that we have in our global surgical ecosystem. And you'll see on the left-hand side of the screen some very familiar terminology of sustainability and integrity, uh, resilience and health, but throughout there, this map, um, terminology that is not unfamiliar to us. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time just looking at um, some of the basics, and there's, um, a little bit text rich on the, the beginning slides here in this, in this talk uh, that, will, that will just be limited to the first few slides. But I thought, um, I was just struck by the fact that there was almost no translation needed in the terminology that was used about ecosystems. And really the analogy and the metaphor is, um, is very, very tight um, when we think about how we do our work in global surgery. And I think that um, you'll see immediate um, trans, um, transference. So ecosystem ecology combines studies of individuals, populations, and communities. And we've talked a lot about whether and how global surgery is considered within the context of global health. And I think that, that um, the ecosystem analogy immediately takes care of it because it integrates the, the studies of all three of those. The boundaries of ecosystems are not fixed and uh, this, I think, is important, too, because there is a lot of fluidity, uh, a lot of sharing and movement of all of our components, and um, that also applies to nature. Ecosystems have energy flow and energy cycles, and we see that whether it's in um, groups that are traveling to various countries or politics in a particular area, there are definite cycles involved. Energy transfer through the food chain is inefficient, and for that, when we look at supply chains, either transfer of material um, goods or even intellectual goods, um, there is some inherent inefficiency in the way that we transfer um, those materials. So the nutrients are the rate-limiting step to growth, and primary producers have the, the most richness, which I think is a, a great analogy for um, building systems that uh, can create resource, excuse me, create the nutrients or the raw materials that are needed to do our work in situ um, because they have the, the least loss of energy and, um, and nutrition as, uh, as they're um, propagated. And then the fact that the function of an ecosystem depends on both bottom-up control and top-down control. So a couple of things, a couple of key concepts within talking about ecosystems. Biodiversity is the degree of variation of life forms within an ecosystem. And this is, importantly, the measure of health of an ecosystem. So the more species there are, 
the healthier the ecosystem that there is. A disturbance, a temporary change in the environment that causes a pr pronounced change in the ecosystem. Um, and those can be, again, a, a wide variety of things, whether it's a national natural disaster or a political coup. Um, succession is a, a process of evolution within that ecosystem and is usually propagated by one of these disturbances. Um, but a rapid disturbance, a, a profound disturbance with a rapid change usually results in at least some degree of extinction. Um, and then this, the, the, the um, UN in the late 80s convened a um, ad hoc working group of, of experts to come together on global biological issues. And they have now um, formalized into this Convention on Biological Diversity, which is where these principles came from. These are verbatim from their core principles. They're not in the same order, um, and they're not complete. They have 12 of them, but I just took out a few that seemed um, particularly um, pertinent to our thought processes and our actions. The first is different sectors of society view ecosystems in terms of both their economic, cultural, and societal needs. Both cultural and, and biological diversity are central to the ecosystem. And I think that's really important and something that's, that's always um, emphasized at this conference and in our thought process in our planning. The ecosystem approach should consider all forms of relevant information, including scientific, indigenous, and local knowledge, innovation, and practices. Ecosystems are complex, with many interactions, side effects, and implications. Um, and our innovation panel this morning, we heard about that, um, the side effects and implications. And they, because of that, they require local, national, regional, and international stakeholders. Management interventions have unknown or unpredictable effects. A decentralized system may lead to greater efficiency, effectiveness, and equity. Ecosystem functioning and resilience depends on dynamic relationships within, among, and between species and their environment, as well as the physical elements of their environment. And then that incentive should be aligned to promote the biodiversity, because that is a, an indicator of strength. Uh, there are expected inherent time lags, and also change is um, to be expected. Ecosystems change as a matter of course. So again, by, in terms of sustainability, the biodiversity, the food chain or supply chain elements, uh, redundancy and variety are critical to both of those. The energy cycles, um, which we know of when we talk about the infrastructure needs, but also maybe the political effects on those, uh, those same elements. The quality of the soil or what the available natural resources and um, physical resources are available. And then the concept of adaptive management, which is basically um, taking into effect how past experiences have altered the environment. So when I think of an ecosystem, it looks like this in my brain. Um, and it is complex and rich and vibrant and really uh, full of energy. And it also becomes clear that depending upon where you stand within this ecosystem, it will look different to you. We've heard described the elegant model of ecosystems um, by Dr. DeVries and Dr. Price that's been developed, which varies somewhat, but has the same common elements as the ecosystem that's employed or uh, utilized by Cinturandes and Dr. Rodas described to us yesterday. And then at Operation Giving Back at the American College of Surgeons, um, this we've thought of uh, the concept of an ecosystem for many years now and, and have been trying to refine what is our place and what are our interactions within that ecosystem. And this is uh, the most recent iteration of how how that uh, looks. And you can see, again, it's, it's many of the same things that we've been talking about these past two days, a multidisciplinary, multinational, multi-specialty, multi-generational uh, interaction. So the, um, the title of my talk talks about navigating or speaks to navigating within this humanity, or the, excuse me, within this surgical ecosystem. 
And I realized as I was putting together my thoughts on this that I might have some subconscious um, influencers as I thought about what it meant to navigate. And I am very lucky to live in one of the, the uh, sailing capitals of the world in Newport, Rhode Island. And I also spent many years in my prior life in the Navy. So I decided that it might be appropriate to talk about navigating the seven seas. And these are concepts that I think, um, depending of, uh, are independent of how your ecosystem looks, uh, what vantage point you have on this very complex and changing um, uh, dynamic, that there are some consistent things that are going to be important for successful navigation. The first is community. And as you'll recall, community was one of the fundamental elements in the definition of an ecosystem. It's critical to understand who else occupies the same space as you, what are the other species that are in your ecosystem, and um, particularly if you happen to be both or all dependent upon the same resources, whether they are um, money or, um, or connections or any, any variety of resources. Um, you'll remember that Again, the, the concept of biodiversity and the number of species is very important for the health of that ecosystem. So understanding fully the number of players, the number of species, the number of other um, elements of your community is important. And again, that's, that's our community uh, and our place and interactions in it. The next C is communication, which is critical to being successful within your immediate community, but also within the larger communities. It's uh, successful to navigating or managing um, the food chains, the supply chains, cycling of energy and resources, whether they're political or business oriented. And we all have multiple channels of communication that we tune into. Um, and also we all generate our own forms of communication. I wanna take just a, a, a quick aside here, and I put a little arrow there. This is the home, uh, the home page of the Operation Giving Back website, but particularly relevant to um, the younger uh, components, the younger members of our audience. Uh, I wanted to, I noticed last night that there, we have a, um, one of the announcements on the home page is for the Rolex uh, Awards for Enterprise, and it's for young innovators up to the age of 30, and I think there are many possible candidates in the room. The um, deadlines are May 31st. The next C is coordination and building on that awareness of your community and leveraging the knowledge that's obtained through communication. Um, this really speaks to how do we ensure peaceful coexistence of the various dwellers within the ecosystem. Again, that are possibly dependent upon the same resources. Essentially, it speaks to the concept of symbiosis. And I think there's tremendous progress, tre tremendous uh, room for improvement, I should say, here in this concept. Um, what I envision still being needed, and it certainly exists in many other sectors, this is um, the website, is this from the Ashoka website, um, just the an example of one of the types of interactive mapping that's available that shows um, who is doing what where. I put that on the, on the left side of the, the screen because at Operation Giving Back, we have a low-tech, uh, incomplete filing system that we use to, to try to keep track of who does what where. And it's incomplete because it's, you know, it's, it's uh, dependent upon our immediate awareness of things as opposed to the crowdsourcing, the Crowdio um, type of approach of gathering information um, and having a higher tech platform that is more open source that allows people to um, self-report on who is doing what where I think is really critical. Um, we hear all too often about uh, one of the, the kind of more common scenarios that you hear about is uh, a group having some sort of involvement in a community and being unaware that there is a similar group coming either they're at the same time or coming the, the next week that may be doing similar work, whether it's education or patient care, 
and a lack of awareness of each other. And that's just one of the many, many examples uh, where better coordination is really critical to achieve. Um, taking that one step further would be the concept of collaboration. And rather than symbiosis, really looking towards synergistic relationships, how do we create a thriving ecosystem where we don't just coexist, but we actually take advantage of those um, knowledge of who's occupying the ecosystem either synchronously or asynchronously that may be partners that we're unaware of. And on that, um, and, and really speaking to the fact that we need to create the opportunities for collaboration and make collaboration easier. So just using the Ashoka uh, internet, excuse me, interactive mapping again, any one of the points, one of, any one of the pins on the map can be drilled down to find out who is the person in charge of that program, what are they doing, uh, when are they there, with further details that may have a website or a blog or a project reports, um, and how to contact these people. And so this woman who's working in India on maternal health may be a potential partner that we're unaware of when we are trying to establish a VVF program in that country or in that community. Um, and just having uh, greater resources to identify our potential partners. The next C that I consider important is consequence. And by that, I'm referencing the outcomes and impact of our work. Studying and reporting on the ways that we both act within our ecosystem and what sort of disturbances we ourselves cause by, um, by our actions, by our introduction into these ecosystems where we may not be native dwellers. Does it cause succession? Does it cause disruption? Does it cause extinction uh, or, um, on purpose or inadvertently? And then we should also consider cause or advocating for the needs, the resources that we need within our community and within our ecosystem, which we learned very effective, excuse me, learned how to do more effectively last night from Dr. Lechman's great presentation. And finally, the final, excuse me, the seventh C is calamity, which really equates in the ecosystem model to a large scale disruption in the ecosystem. And in order to avoid the result of extinction, all of the previous Cs really need to be well developed and established in advance of the calamity, ideally. Um, and then they'll need to be employed within an adaptive manner because the ecosystem is inherently changed. So in large scale um, disruptions like the earthquake in Haiti, uh, just providing an example again at Operation Giving Back of how we employed the established uh, avenues that we had for identifying our community members, those that were pre-existing and new community, community members that become um, important during this type of a disruption, the, um, the mapping to show the coordination of who the, who the players, who was occupying that space at that time, and to establish forms of collaboration among the various components that you can see there, communicating, uh, advocating th with the cause and, uh, and then reporting afterwards on what some of the results were um, of this, of this um, intervention after a calamity. So I want to um, apply this to one particular example. And of late, there has been uh, a lot, uh, excuse me, an, an increase in the attention that has been put on academic global surgical um, opportunities for residents, but also for attending staff. And the concept of a consortium, which just happens to be another C, um, has been be, being more closely re-examined. For those of you that may not be familiar, this is uh, within general surgery over the, la the last year and a half, there has been acknowledgement of the fact that um, this is an important element of surgical education and some criteria have been established um, 
So although there are a number of programs that were pre-existing, there was not any sort of regulatory structure or expectations, and they're not necessarily connected in any way. So there's still um, a lack of awareness um, of where those programs exist um, and where programs that are coming into the pipeline are along that course. And there was a paper just I'm referencing there that we had looked at these issues in the past. The way that I've thought about this and discussed it in the past um, with programs that were involved in developing global surgery outreach, I've always thought about trees growing. And so I thought that I'd illustrate it along those same ecosystem and ecology um, um, metaphor that we've been using. So as the seed gets planted, there needs to be a local champion who is a steward of the resources of the idea and really readies the soil and plants the seed. In, my, um, in this model, the, the roots are meant to be the connections with the country that is being partnered with. And after the idea germinates in its originating institution, the roots need to be established with the partner institution. All of the things that we've talked about in terms of the ecosystem need to be identified. What are the local resources? What is the infrastructure? What are the supply chains? Uh, what is the intellectual and physical material resources that are available, the safety, the legal considerations, all of those things that we discussed. Then as the program grows to maturity, the roots deepen, the tree grows, branches, and um, obviously depends upon an ongoing supply of nutrients until it can bear fruit. And when it bears fruit, there's evidence of success. You may have graduates or outcome measures or research projects um, and securely established relationships. But of course, that's not just happening in one place. It is happening at multiple places, either synchronously or asynchronously, and in different countries. And so as that, the ecosystem management of these new elements, the guidelines that have been established at the regulatory bodies can provide some structure to keep the growth true, um, but also still allow each of the programs to maintain their unique qualities and really maintain the importance of that biodiversity that strengthens this ecosystem. So as they mature, what we can do is allow connection at the canopy level of our trees, of our programs, and allow cross, um, cross-pollination, sharing of resources, hybridization, and really providing new avenues for growth and transformation um, that may not have existed in a different form of, of uh, disruption, positive disruption and transformation that's uh, possible across the canopy. So thank you very much.